next step is to remove, you can either partially remove or remove the entire plastic. And the reason for that is because there's these bolts. You can't come on this side. There's these bolts that we have to remove and replace and add spacers to. So we can remove it partially. It'll still give us access to everything or you could just take off the whole thing. In this case, we, you know, we've done it multiple times. It's easier for us to just, you know, leave it there. And we are adding four spacers with yeah. four new bolts, right? Four new bolts, four new spacers for the lower cell frame. That's one, guys. Another yeah. one is over here. And the step we're gonna do this in, we're gonna we're gonna loosen up the four subframe bolts first as much as we possibly can. We're gonna lower the vehicle. We're gonna lower the vehicle and then work on the uh, engine drop kit. Once the engine drop kit is in, then we come back down here, do the uh, new bolts and spacers, pull everything back up. So it'll be good in that, in that order. Sounds good. Ready? Yep. Another one over there and another one over there. Just for safe, safety reason, guys, we are just adding that part over there. There it is. Right, let's go. <laughs> Easy. Say hello to my little friend. Yeah. There we go. Add a couple of threads back into that. Okay guys, so before adding the spacers on the front subframe, then we have to just loose all the bolts yep. out and then we're gonna start working on the on the engine. Yep. So we gotta remove the airbox. First thing to do, remove the airbox. So what Joseph is doing guys is removing the transmission mount. We do have a video of uh, removal and installation of that mount, so we're just gonna show you where to add the spacers. This is the more challenging part out of the entire uh, sub drop install. These three bolts. Found uh, to remove these three bolts for the transmission mount, the one that goes straight to the chassis, would be getting the lower, two lower ones from here. So it is kind of a hidden, you won't be able to, like hidden view, you won't be able to see, but as soon as you get the ratchet into the, into the bolt, you have all the room down here to do it. It's a lot easier than doing it up there. Joseph just removed the transmission mount, guys. And just keep in mind that this is a manual transmission. The automatic might look slightly different. Mm -hmm. And what are we adding the spacers? So we added the three spacers that belong here. So HRG provides uh, two bolts, this one and another one, right? In the same bag. They're two different lengths. So the shorter one goes on the transmission, the longer one goes in the engine side, just so you guys are aware. But all three of them are ready to go. All three spacers yep. this. And adding the bolts. Perfect. One bolt and the two original nuts go there nice and then we're just gonna install everything back guys and then we're gonna move to the motor mount all right guys so joseph is done with the transmission mount and now we are moving to this right side engine mount supporting the engine with the floor jack guys do that before removing the whole bracket and for this ball, guys, it's a good idea to use a, a, a special socket. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. And then we gotta take off the brown cable and these three 17 millimeter balls. So one, two, and three. Okay. There. This one goes 
Yes, sir. So two spacers and one new bolt, right? Yes, sir. That's our last nut that we're gonna install and that should be it. All right, so since we had loosened all of them and left them with two threads in, this is what that allows us to do. It allows us to take the bolt off and have enough room to put our spacer in, new bolt, some manises. Oh, perfect. And we gotta do the same thing with yep. the other three, three bolts. And this one, you just wanna leave it loose. Give it a couple of, a uh, half an inch, 10 inch. Do that for all three sides, perfect. And I just wanna mention guys that remember that we dropped this first and before adding the spacer, we did the transmission and the engine mount. One, those are done. Then you come back, lift the car again, and then you work on these uh, four spacers. Now because we had the whole kit, uh, you guys gonna run to this that the cleats won't fit into this uh, plastic trim. So this is where you can like add some zip ties here. Maybe you can just remove the whole uh, plastic cover. What I will do guys is uh, I just gonna kind of trim it. I still want this to protect it from the water. So I think this is just optional too. So whatever you think is the best for your car, you can always take this out or just do any other things to to have this in place so all the kit is done guys and you can see that our camber is not really good so we're gonna try to adjust the best that we can if you guys have too much of a camber guys then you can always uh, move the balls the camber balls that we just add and try to adjust it the best that you can and also when we drop the car to the ground, you're gonna notice that the rear is gonna be lifted really high. Don't worry about it. It's gonna kind of stabilize after you drive the car. Straighten it up. Thank you, Steven. I'm happy to help. So with the two inch lift, the tie rods will hit on the frame, but that's only when you lift the vehicle up completely, only. So the solution to that is to actually cut the pinch weld. You would have to cut it. So we'll get back to that. We will do another video, yeah. especially for that, like kind of like a review, right? Correct. How it drives. How it drives, how it yeah. handles. Once you do the alignment, you know, we'll take care of that pinch weld after. Pretty good, thank you Joseph and hope you guys like it.